And welcome back everyone to another paint cast. My name is Ashton, the bearded host behind the brush with Red Modeling Paint Studios. We've got today a little bit of Bradigus action that we are going to be working on. A um, little background on this one. Um, this is for a friend of mine named Becky who is a fantastic crocheter. I don't know if that's even the right word. Fantastic person who crochets. That might be the better way to say it. And she made for my kids uh, a gift a while, a while back at Christmas um, some shark slippers where it looks like the foot is actually being eaten by the shark. They are awesome. <laughs> and my kids love them. Um, and so uh, I am actually going to uh, be painting Bradigus for her and doing this tutorial for her as a way to say thank you. So. What I wanted to do, though, with this paint cast uh, in, uh, was to um, kind of document start to finish, not just start to finish um, painting to um, um, completion, but actually start to finish assembly, priming, painting, and completing. Um, Becky wants this army uh, in purple. She does purple and leather tones with green glow, I believe it was. And so, um, another person who wants purple. <laughs> I feel like I've been painting a lot of that lately. So, uh, Brad, I guess, his cloak here has really got some great potential for some nice airbrush work. So, we're going to be doing some of that in there. Now, the stones are going to be really, really fun to uh, to do with um, adding in some of the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, painting them gray and then kind of creating a green inner glow effect which was kind of what I was planning on doing uh, of course Bradigus's cloak there's a lot of leather on here and a lot of um, room for uh, for adding some really good detail so so all in all I think this is gonna be a fun a fun little build um, you know to put him together and he's a pretty as far as assembly goes um, yeah there's a lot of pieces here but um, there's not a lot of gap filling necessarily so um, you know it's uh, you know from that standpoint it's um, it's not so bad um, just trying to get an idea again of where all the pieces uh, what attaches where I remember right it goes there I, th I believe so it's kinda how he's, he's gonna be coming off there so anyway I'm gonna go through kinda pinning and assembling and all that other stuff um, so let me get some of these smaller pieces out of the way we're going to start with the cloak and uh, when working with the cloak are working with you know cleanup and assembly these are kind of some of the tools that I keep around let me show you guys real quick of course an exacto knife I keep around a toothbrush with a nice stiff bristle on it okay uh, clippers okay um, razor saw hobby saw okay sometimes I will use a smaller version of this which I don't have readily available on me I'll have to show you guys some other time but what they're 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 called photo etch razor saws and they're essentially the razor saw blade without the handle to them and so you know they're quite small about yay big or so so you can really get into some tight places with them uh, so anyway I keep one of those around um, some rat tail files I have a couple different ones of those course a pin vise that I keep around actually, I actually have two different size pin vices okay uh, one for really small wire uh, the uh, other one for um, um, you know larger uh, pins that I might be I might be using so with that in mind let's talk about um, how we're going to where I'm going to start on this and, and how we're actually going to paint this guy and get him done and ready to go um, first thing on the cloak here um, you've got here and here and I don't see one anywhere else so these two spots here these are these are plugs okay they're called resin plugs and uh, it's usually where the resin is poured in and um, where it will escape or event is, is usually what the second one is called so my guess is is this is probably cast in this position poured in through this plug here and vented through this plug here so um, 
the nice thing about working with resin is it's fairly soft when it comes to taking it apart and cleaning it up. Um, so, you know, if I if you end up breaking too much off or cutting too much off, it's really easy to kind of bounce back from that. So, um, so what I'm going to start with is uh, with my clippers here, and just cut this piece off as close as I can and then same up here cut that one off as well and then I'll use my <coughs> exacto knife and I'll just start cleaning this edge up And in fact, kind of hard to see on the camera because it's so light, but there you can see right there, there's a, there's a little bit of a seam right there. So I'm just going to drag the my X-Acto knife blade along that seam and just file that seam down. And this is where I like to use the toothbrush. Nice stiff toothbrush helps get helps get any of the resin dust or metal shavings off, and um, kind of shows you where else you might need to work. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it doesn't really need all that that, that much work right there. Uh, this plug up here, this is going to be a little interesting because you've got a fold in the cloak and um, it's recessed there. So what I'm going to do is just use my X-Acto knife to shave that down as far as I can. Making, paying careful attention to where my finger is and where that blade is because exacto knife cuts hurt. Now this is where your larger drill bit on your pin vise can come in. Uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of drill. Let me tighten it back down and tighten it up all the way there. Uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of drill this out a little bit basically removing material with the pin vise. Okay, and then I can come in with my blade now and just kind of remove that small amount of excess um, resin that's left. And just kind of cleaning that up a little more. And there still is a little bit of a plug left there, so I'm just going to kind of use my drill again to kind of clean that out as best I can. And a lot of that's going to be in shadow, so again, we don't have to get too too crazy with the, how much we clean that up. Clean my work surface off here. All right, and just real quick, I want to check the rest of the cloak here. Look for any flash, any mold lines, and 
clean those up. Everything looks pretty good. This is a really, really solid casting. Alright. Okay, let's set that piece aside now. And we'll just start moving on to all the other little individual pieces as uh, that we got here. And uh, just going to do the same thing, just kind of getting them all off. And a little bit of a casting flash here, but it also looks like there's supposed to be some some cracks are in the rock right there as well, so we can use that to our advantage when it comes to the painting. Here's the other plug here. Piece looks good. Okay, that one looks good. Another good type of clipper to have for this, and my pair actually broke, are what, what are called side clippers. Um, <clears throat> and they're actually designed to, uh, to cut something flush with a surface. So those are really good to have for, for model assembly. And I had a pair, but they broke a few months back. I'd had them for like six or seven years. I had them forever. And um, finally gave up the ghost. So just haven't gotten around to purchasing another pair yet. Okay, I think that one's pretty good. On the side. All right, this is our base piece. So when we pin this one, we're probably going to put the pin right down through here, and then just have it go straight down into the base. Okay. Also, with ones like this where they're really close to the to the surface, sometimes what I'll do is I'll grab a pair of pliers, I have a pair of blended pliers here, and I'll just grab that piece, and now there's not much of it left there to, to grab anymore. And just twist it off. Sometimes it, you get a better, more, more of it removed this way than, than opposed to actually trying to cut it off with the, with the X-Acto knife. That works really well, what I just did there with twisting it off with um, metal, uh, white metal uh, miniatures. You can break those tabs that are on the feet off pretty pretty easily that, easily that way. Okay, that one looks looks pretty good. Set that aside. OK. 
Okay. The other thing you'll notice too, as I'm shaving these these little plugs off, I'm not trying to cut them off all at once. I'm taking a little bit off at each each pass. That way, I have one more control over how much is actually being removed in any one pass, so I'm not taking off too much at once. <coughs> and the second thing is, is I'm not using you know a lot of strength, um, so there's less chance of me slipping and cutting myself um, in the end. All right, so that one's looking good. Now we get to some of the detail pieces here on Bradicus. This looks like it's the front of his tunic. A little bit of a mold line right there. We'll just remove that. And a little bit of flashing right there. We'll remove that. And use the file on this one here. Same thing on this side, all the way up. Okay. Okay, that piece looks good. Now we got Bradigus's hand here. This one all cleaned up. He's got some mold lines on the fingers there. And then right there inside the palm of the hand, I'm just going to scrape over that one, will be good. Hand looks good. And now we get to Bradigus himself. A little flashing there. A little flashing here. On the shoulder, it looks like there's a touch there. Same with the hand. Cut that out. back of the thigh, get rid of that. But right there, we're just going to get rid of that real fast too. Alright, that all looks pretty good. So now, these are the three pieces here that comprise the main part of his body. Of course there's the cloak, but we'll worry about that later. <coughs> so what I, what I like to do now is just kind of go through um, you know, the testing of uh, the testing on the fit of some of these pieces. So figure out the orientation of how some of these parts will go. In fact, I'm just going to take a look at the uh, Privateer Press website here just real quick. And see how they um, have his hand, and particularly the rocks that are going to go on the cloak, oriented as well. Because I know that there is a... Certain ones go certain places, and I want to make sure... That I got it right. So, 
almost there. And there's Bradigus right there. So it looks like uh, this left hand here, the palm is oriented in a vertical position. About like, like so. So this um, tassel on his on his hand, I'm going to want to bend it down like so, so that's not sticking straight up in the air. So I'll be left with something that'll look more or less like that. Okay. And then this front cloak, part of his cloak, it's got a nice pin there, and it'll just attach right there, like so. All right, big thing I want to figure out though now is the pinning of the base, okay, and how we're going to orient everything because um, this model seems like it would be a model that would uh, tip over easy. And also with the um, uh, piece of rock here that he stands on, um, I don't want it to break off the base. So we're going to actually try and pin this guy all the way down into the base. And for that, I'm going to use some brass rod so we can make that happen. And first thing that I'm going to do is kind of more or less figure out where this brass rod, how this brass rod has to be oriented to um, to work to provide the best uh, best contact point for me. So it looks like it's about like so that it sits. Let's see here. Down like that. Okay. And that's not going to be able to go down all the way through the pin, it looks or through the base, it looks like. But I still could get a fairly solid contact. And that'll be good. Alright, so what I'll do, I've got a drill here. I like to use a hand drill for when I'm doing my pinning. It just goes a little faster for me. And if I do drill all the way through too, I can always use a little bit of putty to clean things up so I don't worry about it too much. I want the drill to go through. I want the pin to be as deep as it can be, so I'm going to drill in as far as I can there. Check the uh, the fit of the hole for my pin. Make sure that all goes in nicely. Looks good. Okay. And then looking where this is going to go in at. It's going to be about right on the top there. So I'm just going to flatten this out a little bit more like so and then we're going to drill this now And again, if I go through, that's okay. I can use a little bit of putty to fill any holes or gaps. I'm just letting it go really slow because I don't want to uh, stab myself in the finger with the drill bit.
okay all the way through which is fine like I say use a little bit of putty to clean that up move some of the flash here around the edge Check my pin, make sure my pin fits. Everything's fine there. <coughs> Hopefully we're lined up fairly well. Okay. And I'm just gonna cut length off here. kind of mark where I need to bend this wire at to break it. Grab my pliers, snap that off, and now is the moment of truth and we see if we actually have everything lined up well enough. And looks like we do. So there's how that's going to be pinned there. You can see that. So what I'm going to do is pull this pin out and go ahead and drop a little bit of glue in there and set that pin. I think my, I think my super glue is clogged here. Hold on a second, guys. Last thing I want to do is start squeezing on this bottle and send super glue spraying all over the place. So let me just clear this plug here. All right. And that's what it was. It did have a little bit of a plug in it. So just add a drop in there and set the pin. So, so that piece is pinned, ready to go. I'm going to set it aside. Now we've got these two pieces here, and we're going to need to use the smaller uh, pin vise of the two that I have. I mean, I guess we could use the big one. We go certainly we go faster with the big one, but I'm just going to use the small one, and get it out of the way. People ask sometimes in regards to pinning and assembling models, do you have to, how deep do you have to go? Um, it's all relative, I suppose. I mean, the pin is there really just to kind of add some extra mass to the, uh, to the whole thing. So. So you have to go as deep as you have to go. However, end up however that much that ends up being. I suppose experience informs a lot of that. So that's probably good there. I'll grab the hand here now. And painting on a rounded surface sucks. So <laughs> what I tend to do is um, is just kind of cut the dome, the very tip of the dome off on these rounded uh, ball and joint, ball and socket uh, type pieces. And then I use that flat space there as the guide of where I start pinning at with my vise.
if you apply too much pressure to a pin vise, it just won't turn. And if you don't apply enough pressure, you end up uh, turning for a long time. So the, the trick is to kind of find that that sweet spot. Okay, probably good there, so let me get some of my smaller wire that I use. I believe this is a 20 gauge uh, floral wire, if I remember right. I actually need to buy more of it, I'm almost out. Add a drop of super glue to the end of that. Use your pliers to wedge it down in there really well. Snip the end off. And test your hole. There you go. Got lucky, lined up right. So I'm going to glue that arm in. And then I'm not going to pin this front part of his tunic here. Uh, it's got a lot of surface area there. Okay, um, It's got a decent size uh, alignment and, and, and socket there. And so I think, uh, I think we're safe on this one. I don't think I need to to go as far as pinning it. Just so we can get it to line up right, and there we go. Alright. So, <coughs> I'm going to set this one aside. Set him aside for a moment. And the cloak, I'm not going to pin either, because it's got a nice, nice nib there to line up with, and when we're ready to get to that point to attach the cloak to Bradigus himself. I'll scratch the paint here and, and get bare metal to resin and uh, that'll make a nice solid joint there. And same thing on the uh, rock bits here. I'm not going to pin these on either um, for the same reason the um, they've got good um, contact. Okay, And I'll do the same thing, scratch them or scratch, remove the paint and apply resin to resin and when resin to resin is super glued, it creates a very strong bond, um, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, but I need to figure out how I am going to paint this model without actually touching it with my hand. And for that, I mean, this resin gets pretty thick. Maybe I do need to put this together. I don't like that. Oh, I gotta remember that that's part of his inner cloak there. And in fact, there's a little bit of a tab there that looks like it needs to be removed. There you go. So I think, I think, I think, I think, I think I will actually go ahead and attach him to the cloak now. So that way, um, so that way I, I've got something more to hold on to with painting. It's not my first choice, but I think it will work fine. So. Uh, what I'll do is um, I'm just going to kind of scratch the resin here. Scratch the little the little plug there that uh, 
is going to be inserted into the to the socket just basically increasing the surface area and giving the paint a little more something to hold on to there and do the same thing here drop in there, a little bit of a drop around, that should be plenty of glue to hold. And the fit we already checked was great, so we don't have to worry about that. And we're just going to plop it on there, like so. And with the hole already drilled on the bottom here, I'll have a place to insert a toothpick to hold him nicely while I move on with my painting. Okay, set that aside so that can dry. And for these, um, these remaining pieces here, I'm just going to drill a hole right in there into the socket on all of these and then insert toothpicks into them so that I have something to hold on to while I'm painting and priming. So uh, with that guys, I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. <clears throat> Dinner's almost ready, so I'm going to go get myself something to eat and then tonight I'm going to be working more on my lock and load entry, so I'm not going to be doing any more paint casts tonight. But thanks though for um, your guys' participation and for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to email me at redmodeling at gmail.com. You can always find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash redmodelingpaint. If you're interested in getting your own paint cast tutorial done, make sure to contact me at one of those two places. Until next time we see you guys, take care and thanks for being here. Bye-bye.